hey there everyone welcome to bright engineering today we are going to look at rl first other circuits right and then to understand this we are going to first of all start with source free rl circuits so that we get the understanding better right so let's start with a circuit like this where we have our inductor and then we have our resistor right so we have our l and we have our r and then the voltage across this l is going to give us vl and the voltage drop across this r is also going to give us vr right and of course there is a current that is flowing which is i so it is assumed that at initial conditions when we had a voltage applied to this or a voltage connected to this this inductor was charged and when this voltage is disconnected to give us a source free rl circuit this charge inductor would now tend to allow current to flow from it to the resistor r right so now we want to find our kvl equations or apply our kvl to this particular loop and we know from kvl that the algebraic sum of voltages in a closed loop is equal to zero so since we don't have a voltage cell here we are going to get zero which is equal to the voltage that will be dropped at this inductor and of course we are going to get l di dt right we are getting the idt because this inductor gets charged with differential current as the current changes and alternates then the inductor gets charged right plus this which is going to give us that's the resistor times the current is going to give us the voltage drop across this current right so now we can make one stand alone so we can get r i is equal to minus l di over dt Right. and now we are interested in the current i that's the current that flows through the flows from the inductor to the resistor right so that's what we are interested in so from here we can choose to make the di over i stand alone right so here we divide both sides by negative l and here by negative l to so get r negative r l multiplied by i is equal to di over dt Right. and since we are interested in the current it means that we have to make i stand alone so we can just cross multiply to make dt come here and then i come here and right. so we are going to get negative r on l dt is equal to di over i right good so when we have something like this then now we can integrate both sides to find our i right so we can add our integration sign here our integration sign here and when we are considering we know that r and l are constant so we can now bring them outside to get our negative r on l right and an integral of dt will just simply give us t right okay. so t then don't forget to bring your constant because we are talking about integration in a right which is equal to the differential of this so this can also be written as di times one over i right and then one over i when we integrate one over i is simply is going to give us ln of i right because ln of i the differentiation of ln i is going to give you one over i so here we are going to get ln of i right so we can just because we have ln a here and then ln i here we can just straight away bring it here and then we are going to get minus r of t over l is so equal to ln i sorry ln i minus ln of a and then we know that ln i minus ln a is simply ln into bracket i divided by a right so we can get minus r t over l into ln into bracket i over a right so this is what we are going to get so here we can just straight away find our i of t which is our i of t is now equal to the a e minus r of t divided by l right so based on this Based on this we are getting this right so here simply our a here is just the initial currents right the initial current at which the inductor was charged so we can say that our a is the same as our i not right so with this being said now we know that our formula of i of t so it means that i of t is simply i not e minus r c over l right and then r of r divided by l is also the same as one over tau or tau right so we can also use this in our equations right so now let's go to our original equation since we know this formula already right so here with this we have 
time is equal to t but then this switch is open right so you see that at t is equal to zero the switch is open and when t is less than zero the switch will be closed right and now we have to find this i of t that is flowing through this inductor so at first we are going to close the circuit and then secondly we have to open the circuit again right so when we, we are starting here say at t less than zero and when at t is less than zero this will be closed and when this closed this inductor here at dc conditions is going to behave like a closed circuit right so it means that we are going to get rid of this two ohms resistor right so it means our circuit is going to be like this and of course this so that's what we are getting. We are getting our two ohms here, our twelve ohms here, our four ohms, and our sixteen ohms, right? And of course, let's not forget our voltage, which is ten volts. Okay. And now finding our equivalent resistance, this sixteen won't be used in our calculations because of this short circuit that we have here, right? So this short circuit is rendering this resistor useless so now our equivalent resistance is going to be this four in parallel with this and then the total is going to be added to this two right so now we are going to get four in parallel with the 12 which is four times 12 over four plus 12 and our answer here is going to give us three ohms so the equivalence of this is three ohms and when we add the three ohms to two we are going to get five right so our equivalent resistance which is req is just five ohms so in order to find I, the total current, we are going to get this voltage divided by this resistance, right? So I is equal to 10 volts divided by 5, which is 2 amps. Don't forget, when we close this circuit, still we have this voltage here. So the current that is going to flow through this short circuit region is what we call the I naught. That's the initial current because we from our the initial current is what you get when the voltage source was applied to the circuit, right? So now that we have our I here, I have to find the current that is flowing through this this short circuit. And simply the current that is going to flow through this short circuit is going to be the same current that will flow through this four ohms because this 16 is useless, right? So in order to use it, we are going to use our current divider rule and then we can find I naught. So I naught is simply the resistance of the opposite branch which is 12 divided by the addition of the 2 12 plus 4 times the total current that we have which is the 2 right and our answer here is going to give us 1.5 amps so now we know that our i naught is 1.5 amps and now we can write that one down right so now that we are done with this we can now find a t greater than zero right so when this circuit is open right So at t greater than zero, this switch is still going to be open. And when this switch is open, it means that all these things are going to be useless and we wouldn't need it, right? So we are going to be left with this diagram. Of course, we are going to get our inductor just like when we were treating the free source so we are going to get our inductor you know that here is 2h don't forget your i naught as current which is 1.5 here is 16 ohms we have our 4 ohms there and then our 12 ohms too is going to be here right so now we have to find equivalent resistance to from here you know that this is in series with this so 12 plus 4 is going to give us 16 and then the 16 is also parallel to this 16 so you're going to get 16 in parallel with 16 which is 16 times 16 over 16 plus 16 and our equivalent resistance is going to give us 8 ohms right so when we have 8 ohms now we can draw our circuits to get this so here is 8 ohms and here is 2 Henry right so once we have this we are left with just with an equivalent resistor and an inductor so now we can find our time constant which is tau right and we know that tau is simply the l divided by r which is 2 divided by 8 and our answer is going to give us 0 
five, right? So now that we have been able to find tau two, then we can just straight away find our i of t, right? And then from our previous formula, we said that i of t is simply i naught e raised to the power negative t over tau, right? So over tau. In here we are just going to insert our formula so i of t here is going to be i naught which is the 1.5 e raised to the power negative t divided by the 0 0.25 right and this is the same as writing e raised to the power 1 over 0 0.25 times t and then 1 over 0 0.25 is simply 4 so we can say that i of t is 1.5 e raised to the power negative 4 of t and this is our answer thank you very much for following if this has been helpful please don't forget to comment like and share